Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we are back. This is going to be week number four of the PGPL season three and we are going up against a pretty nuts opponent. We're going up against the killer Nacho. Uh, he has a very, very scary team. So we both have Tapus and we both have unburdened Pokemon to kind of deal with it, except his Tapu has clear type advantage over mine. So I didn't even bring my Tapu Fini. I really, really wanted to. I thought maybe I could get away with it and some kind of a Rindo Berry situation, but he also has a Zerka tree. So I was kind of tempted towards Bacon, but in the end, I just couldn't justify I bring it however i do have a grassy seed drift limb coming and this is really meant as a hard counter to his halucha it can burn the halucha it's immune to the high jump kick acrobatics is going to hurt like a banshee but i think it's the best answer we have to it and just in general to spread around burns across his team but you can see on top of his unburden he has a little mini rain core between the polytoad and the swift swim kabutops as well as for the noivern 100 accurate hurricanes so basically for that i just got to rely on my defenses this is a really fun muck set it's a curse recycle muck with gunk shot and fire punch just for the fair thorn if i didn't need it for the fair thorn i probably would have ran something different i really do want to bring that other set really really soon but pretty standard defensive reggie steel a calm mind iron defense stored power necrozma and a pretty standard zygarde this one's life orb it's not choice so that should be a lot of fun it does carry the sludge bomb just for the type of wulu it does have 40 i believe evs in special attack specifically just to guarantee an oko on a completely uninvested top of Ulu. Everything else is pretty standard. The Electros is especially defensive as an Electros can be more or less, pretty much specifically for the Zerka tree, but obviously it doesn't bring it here. So it's going to have a lot of fun just kind of pivoting in and out. Now, fun fact, my main reasoning for bringing the Necrozma to begin with was because uh, he didn't have a dark type and he didn't have a ground type either. This first time that Electros is going to be freely able to Volt Switch instead of having to rely on U-Turn. So that is going to be a lot of fun, I hope. So with that, I just want to get into the battle. Uh, this is going to be a really fun one. I believe I just just lead off with the mug. Uh, Monk didn't really have that big of a role. I don't think. I don't know. Uh, I thought it was the best lead overall, but he ends up leading off with the top of Bulu. Oh, I remember. I believe I expected him to lead off with a Ferrothorn, maybe. So I wanted to be able to, to surprise him with a Fire Punch in case that happened. But uh, seeing this top of Bulu here, I knew he had to switch out, and I knew he was going to be getting a little bit of recovery with that Grassy Seed. So as he switches out, my thinking was that I would go for the freest of curses right now. Now, as he brings in the Halucha to pretty much try to sweep me from the very beginning. He gets the Grassy Seed, so he's plus one in defense, which is going to pretty much cancel out my Curse Raise. However, I do still have that plus one in defense, so hopefully we can take the these hits uh, pretty darn well. But again, if he tries to get up a Swords Dance right now, I mean, who knows how well my Muck is going to take it. And he does! That's exactly what he does. He goes for the Swords Dance, but I believe... I believe I just ended up going going for another curse. No, I just go straight for the gunk shot. I guess I wanted to gauge damage at this point. And uh, it's doing over half, but still not nearly enough. I also really was hoping for that 30% uh, gunk shot poison. That would have been super helpful, but it never ends up happening for me. He does just roost. I guess he's trying to bait out a gunk shot miss, which it's totally fair. But in my mind at this point, I'm kind of panicking because I do not trust my, my ability to land all my gunk shots at all at this point but i don't have really any other plays i do believe that i do know he has to go for roost at this point so i think at this point i take an opportunity to go for a curse if not then i believe it happens next turn yeah so it should happen next turn i do end up just going for the gunk shot praying that i don't miss but uh i think in my mind at this point i'm thinking well he's gonna have to attack me eventually i think we're trying to like play mind games against each other trying to figure out if he gets, if he takes a turn to roost, then I can take a turn to curse up. And if I take a turn to curse up, then he can get a free roost off. So I think we're both playing those like mind games. If I ever don't get this prediction right, then we could be in a whole lot of trouble. But I do end up taking that opportunity to get another curse up. And I believe right now he just goes straight up for the high jump kick. No, he goes for another sword dance. So yeah, I think he knows that I'm trying, that I'm going to try to get up pretty healthy uh with my raises but he takes that opportunity to raise himself up and i'm really scared at this point i'm at plus three defense i believe at this point and i believe he just goes for, yeah he just goes on the offensive now he just goes for the straight up high jump kick from a gosh dang halucha but uh we take it decently well i mean really not that well at all but we do have that gluttony figgy berry for us i'm able to get that gunk shot off and again i'm just hoping that i don't miss if I got one more curse up, then that would have been ideal, but I would have never gotten the opportunity. High jump kick was doing 
way too darn much. In any case, I do uh, end up getting off that second gunk shot, and I didn't miss a single gunk shot in this whole exchange. I believe I used five gunk shots, and I haven't missed one. I am so, so grateful for that. Unfortunately, I didn't get any poisons, which would have which would have helped me out an insane amount, but unfortunately, it doesn't happen. Now, here, I make a huge, huge, huge misplay, right? So, he goes into Ferrothorn and doubles into Politoed. He completely baited out my Fire Punch, like, perfectly. However, this would have been a perfect opportunity to go for a... Recycle. I, I think I just clicked my move too quickly, right? So I knew in my head that at plus four, at, or sorry, at plus three defense, that Ferrothorn wasn't going to take me out with any attack anyway. So my best play would have gone for, would have been to go for a recycle uh, no matter what. And he switched out. So I would have been decently healthy. I would have gotten one more hit off on this Politoed, but unfortunately it didn't happen. Uh, in the end, his Politoed just ends up taking me out, but I'm fine with it because. Uh, it, in the end, it just stalls out a turn of rain. I go into my Registeel trying again to stall out rain turns as much as possible. Um, I know that I think I can bait him a little bit into um, playing as Politoed a little bit passively. If I can like lure his Politoed to just, just kind of stay in, then that would allow me to just kind of burn off rain turns. Um, Anything that I could do in this situation to kind of prevent him from playing like the more aggressive switches into the Kabutops, which he does end up making to his credit, but uh, he did give me a, a few turns to just kind of mess around with his Politoed, which was what I was going for. But now that this thing's in, I kind of don't have an answer for this thing right now because um, the grassy terrain is not up, so I can't uh, bring in that Drift Blim freely, and uh, I can't really hit this thing with much. I ended up just going for the Toxic. I did kind of expect him to Sword Dance, but either way, I wanted to get that residual damage happening. Uh, I wanted to try to just, like, like I said, stall out some turns and do what I can as a poor little Registeel up against this uh, Kabutops in the rain at plus two now, which is incredibly scary. However, he does go for the Liquidation. I kind of thought there was a chance that I could take it, and we do end up taking it. We do get a Seismic Toss off. But uh, he will have one more turn of rain, which is super duper scary. And at this point, I'm just looking at my team and I'm just thinking about what the heck I should um, sack at this point. I'm sorry, he's going to have one turn of rain after he takes me out right now. But he's going to have one turn of rain left and he's going to be able to pretty much KO anything on the team that I bring out. So I'm thinking to myself, OK, the Haluch is down. I don't have as much use for this Drift Blim, as much as I really would love to use Drift Blim. I just end up bringing up the Drift Blim. Maybe he goes for Stone Edge and misses, who knows. But uh, he ends up having the Z Stone Edge, the Continental Crush, and he goes for that obviously because uh, if he did miss, that would have been pretty darn bad. But ultimately, I was sending this thing out as a sack. I wasn't expecting it to do anything really. I mean, again, maybe I get the the dang miss, but it wasn't terribly likely. I was expecting this thing to, to get taken out right this turn. However, however, if I did all my counting right, I was counting on my fingers and my toes. Um, this rain should end right now, and it should give me an opportunity to just bring in anything and take him out. And I did get rocks up, so there's no reason for him to switch out this thing. And unfortunately, I did have to go for the extreme speed. Um, because of the fact that, um, he could have the Aqua Jet and he's still at plus two, which is still really scary. And I'm still a Zygarde with very little HP. So, um, I did end up just going for that KO. Although if he did try to bait in anything, like, like try to bait in the Bulu or something like that, then that would have been a pretty scary. I don't know. Things could have happened, but I had to play safe and go for the extreme speed, even though it wasn't really likely that he would do anything too, too crazy. The Politoed comes in, and I do kind of think he has the, has the Ice Beam. I'm Either way, I end up going out into the Electros. He goes for the Toxic on the switch in, which is kind of wild. I kind of could have gotten a free Thousand Arrows on, in on this thing, but in retrospect, it was pretty much uh, too risky of a play for me to make. Although, I don't know. Maybe I wish I did. I don't know. Who knows? In any case, uh, my Electros is in here. Uh, I can get the freest of Volt Switches off. This Electros is able to pretty much sponge that damage. I'm pretty confident right now in uh, whatever I really feel like doing. And I'm, and I'm running these calc, right? And I knew that I had to get this thing lower for Thousand Arrows to be able to KO it. 
And uh, after that, Volt Switch, after those turns of Toxic, after those rocks and all that, whatnot, I know now that uh, that was never going to take it out. Actually, okay, so it, it, it got down way lower than I thought, but I knew I had to get it down below around like 50-ish percent to be able to ensure the Oko, so that's what I was going for in that moment. Either way, the Zygarde was always the best switch. I can, um, I didn't want to get Toxic on my Necrozma, obviously, but then this thing comes in, right? And I'm very, very afraid of this thing. So I end up going out into my Electros, right? My Electros is kind of my dedicated answer to this thing, as I know he's just going to go for the Hurricanes, and at this point, I'm starting to think that this thing is going to be choice for that, like, choice rain situation. I thought that would be the best thing for the Neuvern right now. So after this damage, I wanted to uh, take a second and pause, because in the moment, I did a whole lot of calculating on this, right? So I was talking to Randy HLD Productions before this match, and as we were talking, he kind of put the idea in my head that this could be a Scarf Neuvern if he does end up bringing it, and and that honestly kind of scared me quite a bit. So I did calc out Scarfed. The way that it broke down was Scarf damage maxes out at 44 points of damage, right? And he did 51 points of damage to my Electros. Now, if I had taken some more uh, moments to look at it further, I would have seen that the minimum damage for Specs Neuvern was 51 points of damage. So it was just kind of a moment where I calc Specs damage, it looked close enough, and I didn't uh, spend enough time like really investigating it. At this point, I should have known that this thing was Specs, and I really just didn't investigate it too hard. So as this match progresses, I do go under the assumption that that this Neuvern is Scarf. And I can talk in just a second or two after the match as to what I should have done if the Neuvern was in fact not Scarfed. But in any case, what ends up happening is I take this turn to go for the Volt Switch as I know I'm gonna take another Hurricane. I'm confident enough in that, but I do live on eight HP. There aren't rocks in, so I can switch this thing once more. So I do take the chance to go for that Volt Switch, bring it under half. And at this point, I'm calcing out like really hard because I know that my uh, okay, so here he goes for the hurricane. Sorry, he goes for the hurricane here, and with how much damage that does, at 100% confirms uh, specs. I know that this thing is specs now. As I go for the iron defense, which is useless now. I thought um, obviously the iron defense is for the Bulu, but uh, it's useless against this Noivern. I know I'm gonna get taken out by this Noivern again, so I have to switch out into the Electros. I know I can um, sack this thing off now, burn another turn of rain. And let myself get taken out to a hurricane and I don't know from here my only thinking was that I can go into my Zygarde and hope for an extreme speed crit because at this point uh, I counted out as vigorously as I could and extreme speed is just not doing enough it if I had a like another 10% on this Neuvern then I'd be fine extreme speed would, extreme speed would do what it needs to do but Unfortunately, I have to get that damage off on that Neuvern uh, at the expense of my Zygarde, and uh, my Necrozman can, can come in as the rain ends, which is super duper important because he ends up not wanting to risk the Hurricane miss and brings in the Bulu. Now, as the Bulu comes in, so, okay, at this point, I already thought the match was over. I thought all he has to do is hit another Hurricane on me and the match is literally over, right? And the thing is, I don't know. He ends up switching out, obviously not wanting to risk that hurricane miss. I honestly forgot what I clicked because, again, I was just clicking a move so that the match would end, but I thankfully ended up clicking Moonlight as the Bulu switches in. I get back up to pretty much full, and I'm able to Iron Defense because I outspeed this Bulu, which is kind of wild, but I end up getting the Iron Defense off, which is going to a uh, super like mitigate his damage quite a bit and he goes for the horn leech uh does still quite a bit in the grassy terrain turns out that this is a banded bulu which i don't which i don't even think that i realized until after the match it was just something that i didn't really um need to look at because i can see how much damage it's doing i'm getting enough recovery back i can iron defense up to plus four at this point and uh i think at this point i'm pretty much set on going to plus six up against this thing with moonlight as well but now he's not doing anything more or less and like i said at this point moonlight seems pretty much free and my only offensive move is stored power again doesn't have a dark type on his draft so this is the only reason why i'm able to bring this kind of a set but my only offensive move is stored power right so i know i'm gonna have to do a lot more to kind of uh be able to deal with this ferrothorn but 
I'm kind of expecting this Bulu to just like stay in and try to deal as much damage as I as, I, as he can. So I just end up going to plus six on the iron defenses. Takes this opportunity to switch out into Ferrothorn. Totally, totally fine. However, I'm running on the Calyx. I know that I'm nowhere near doing enough damage to this Ferrothorn with just uh, my plus six iron defense and stored power. So I have to get up some calm mines, and I'm really, really afraid of what this thing's gonna take an opportunity to do. He ends up going for the Leech Seed. That's a little bit scary, but uh, manageable, I think. I don't think he's, he has anything crazy on his move set that um, is going to be able to wall me. However, all that I've seen this Ferrothorn use all match was the Leech Seed, so I don't have any clue if this thing has anything that can uh, potentially bring this back for him at all. So I ended up just going for the Stored Power. This is more of a, like, gauging uh, damage at this point, and I can tell from that damage that he is reasonably specially defensive right because uh i should have been doing over half if he was just max hp and let's say max defense i don't know but uh that damage tells me that i'm gonna have to do some more work with some more calm mines and uh admittedly i can go overboard with with setting up and i probably do go end up going for too many calm mines but uh he ends up withdrawing which gives me a pretty free calm mind right here but i think what he was going for was maybe i'm not sure I think he knew that this thing went down to rocks. He, he probably wanted to get his Bulu in for free. Um, however, I do get the free Calm Mind up. And I'm decently uh, raised enough where I can deal with the Ferrothorn fine. And I know I outspeed this dang Bulu. So whatever I'm doing to this thing, I'm going to get the damage off first. And I should be able to to hit if not oko i don't know at this point i didn't even want to run the calc i don't want to like upset myself if if something like went crazy wrong in my calcing so i just went for the sword power it ends up okoing after rocks and that was a huge relief so now i just got to deal with this ferrothorn and by the looks of it this ferrothorn doesn't have anything that can wall me quite yet so i'm still hoping i still have no idea what what else this thing has i mean i assume this thing has rocks leech seed maybe protect i'm not too too sure at this point um, but I just go for the sword power again. I wanted to gauge damage because I am at another uh, raised special attack with calm mind, and it does end up taking this ferrothorn out, which I was super relieved about. And that is going to be the win. We take the win off of the undefeated Miami Dolphins and taking the win off of the Killer Nacho. That was an insane match, an insane match. It was not a match that I expected to win as the match was getting towards the end there. I think obviously if you ask him now, he would tell you that he probably should have just risked those hurricane misses. Now, if I had known that he was Specs, what I should have done in that situation was gone for the Dragon Tail, which I packed on my Electros, which was specifically for the Zerka Tree if it tried to set up or the the Neuvern just got some damage off. It just worked well against his team on everything except the Bulu, right? So if I just gone for that Dragon Tail, I would have done just under half. He still would have been fine even with that damage and after another round of Stealth Rocks, but he would have been well, well, well within range of a Zygarde Extreme Speed. So I wouldn't have had to give up that Zygarde that early on. And I still did have the Sludge Bomb for the Bulu, which would have done a lot of damage to that. Thousand Arrows would have done respectable damage against the Pharaoh thorn and then i just did still have the necrozma in the back which probably could have handled either of them fine well i mean obviously you guys saw that i could handle them both fine that would have been the way to ensure the win uh regardless as it was i had to rely on somewhat of a misplay by not just risking the the hurricane misses and nacho was telling me after the fact that he was kind of upset that he didn't just go for the wood hammer instead of the horn leech however i think i would have been able to handle that 1v1 with being able to go to plus six on my iron defenses and being able to moonlight off that damage so who knows what would happen but but moral of the story is i should have just uh, taken another second checked my calcs known that that thing was specs gone for the dragon tail and i probably win that match anyway but that's all speculation i'm just happy to have that win and in the end it was a whole whole lot of fun but with that thank you guys so much for watching we'll be back again with more weeks of the pgbl coming up next week and tomorrow is going to be the final week of the pgl and u cup and depending on how that goes playoffs as well because as of right now we are the third seed it is very very possible that we could lose with enough differential that somebody else could win and take over my spot 
at that third seed. And if that's possible, it's also very possible that two people could do that and two people can leapfrog me, kick me out of the playoffs. So hopefully we can win and we will be in for the playoffs in the PGL and Cup as well. And there will be uh, some really cool new stuff as well. Uh, the UBL will be coming up pretty darn soon and and i joined another league altogether the saffron battle network that's going to be a whole lot of fun but more on that to come really really soon but with that thank you guys once again so much for watching and i'll be once again out